live. We're live, people. Thank you for joining us. Kicking it with Carrie starts now. Woohoo! Woohoo! Kristen, cheers. Cheers. To uh, our uh, world premiere of Kicking It with Carrie. You know, I was watching an interview with James Corden. You know who that guy is? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> And apparently, you know, carpool karaoke had kind of a difficult start. Like, no, nobody wanted to do it. So, like, the first singer that finally, after they, he said that they asked everybody who was anybody if they wanted to do, like, this carpool karaoke thing. Mm -hmm. And everybody said no. He said, it, think of any singer. Elton John, you know, Adam Levine, uh, Post Malone, Adele. And they all said no, every single one. But Mariah Carey finally said yes. So you are my Mariah Carey. Thank you. Yes, you're right up there. So one day, you know, in like, you know, five years, <laughs> like when I'm, you know, interviewing Oprah, then um, <laughs> it all started it'll, here. It, it all started here with Kristen's score. That's right. But you got to bring Oprah over here then, because Oprah, I want to meet her. That seems fair. <laughs> so on that subject, we're in Oprah. Uh, not in Oprah. So we're in Kristen's home. Thank you for opening your home to us. Yes. And she's got this beautiful little charcuterie board, which is that word I just learned how to say properly, <laughs> and um, and a yummy drink. So we're we're kicking it. Keep, keeping it casual. Keeping it casual. Kick, kick, kicking it. <laughs> and this week, this is just the beginning of a week full of fun. So um, we're starting off here with Kristen, and we're going to be talking about skin checks and body mapping and what the heck all that is. And then we're going to be doing something tomorrow night with Jennifer Moeller. I think we're going to be talking about pigment. And then on Wednesday, we're, and that's going to be in Huntington at her home. And then on Wednesday, we're going to be at Dr. Lamer's home. And we're going to be talking about how your diet might affect your skin mm -hmm. and other illnesses that you may have. And Thursday, it's going to be all about Dr. Elstrom, our plastic surgeon. Uh, we're going to be talking about how the landscape of plastic surgery has changed. Uh, over the last 10 years, but then also over like since COVID, it's also changed Definitely. again. Mm -hmm. And then we'll wrap up the week with Dr. McNeil and her, her home in San Juan. We'll be talking about kind of what's coming down the pipe for uh, dermatology, like what's new, what's working, what's not working. Um, so lots of interesting things. You guys can, you know, set your calendar, your Google calendars and join us every night. Um, I would love that, and it would be nice to have more than just my mom watching. Mom, <laughs> love you. Thanks for watching. Appreciate it. Um, but tonight, we're here with Kristen, and I, I really, I struggled with what should I wear for the world premiere of Kicking It With Carrie. And I thought, why not, you know, kind of put myself in that space where I know a lot of patients, they come in for skin checks, mm -hmm. and some of them, I'm going to be totally honest, they're like, I don't want to get naked in front of my provider. Do I really have to? And I know how uncomfortable it can be sometimes to take your clothes off in front of strangers. Not sure. that you're a stranger, but, but you know, it can be uncomfortable. So I wanted to just like show my support, my <laughs> solidarity with all of you. And I'm wearing a medical gown. our medical gown. <laughs> this is how it all starts, right? So I'm going to ask my very first question. Was I supposed to take off my bra and underwear? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, kind of, we can definitely chat about that. Um, definitely what a skin exam looks like is usually we'll have you get down into your undergarments. Um, so typically we'll leave the underwear on, um, but we can check out special lesions if you have special lesions of concern. Um, and then bras are up to choice. Uh, but otherwise, the, you can see that the medical gown actually does cover quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, so we usually just expose Spanish. an area at a time um, just going through your exam. So you're not just fully exposed on the table. We take a little section at a time and try and keep you covered and comfortable. Yes. It, it can be uncomfortable for certain people. And so we've even got the little drapes. So they, they kind of just work, work around. So they'll just, you know, take off one little spot, see what they got going on, and then, and then go for the next. Exactly. So the skin checks, what are you looking for? Or like, yeah, so I mean, skin checks are really important. So if you're wondering why do I even need a dermatologist or what's the point of having a skin exam, um, skin cancers are one of the most common uh, cancers worldwide. And of them, melanoma is one of the most dangerous types of skin cancers. Um, so 
Statistic-wise, one in five Americans uh, will have a skin cancer by the time they're 70. Um, if you've had five or more sunburns in the past, that doubles your risk of melanoma. And uh, if you catch melanoma early, your five-year survival rate is 99%. So it's really, really high. So the big thing with doing a skin exam is really all about early detection. Mm -hmm. The earlier that you catch anything, the better. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, that's why we you know recommend um, skin exams. So, uh, oftentimes people are asking, you know, how often should I do this? So the general recommendations are, anyone really over the age of 18 should get an annual or yearly skin exam. Mm -hmm. um, that's variable. So I mean, kids can definitely get skin exams too if they have any lesions of concerns. Um, I've seen patients as young as three months old at some point in time. Patients over a hundred. So it's really you know. It can be at any age that you start getting your skin exams. Um, without any history of skin cancer, if you're a fresh slate, um, the typical recommendation is once a year. Mm -hmm. If you have a history of certain skin cancers that we'll talk about too, but um, basal cell carcinomas, squamous cell carcinomas, or um, if your provider says that you have a lot of atypical moles, they may want to see you every six months. Right. And then if you've had melanoma in the past, it's generally every three months. But your provider, whoever you meet with, will take into account your history, your family history, what they see on your exam, and make a suggestion for you. But in general, if it's your first time, kind of plan on once a year. So and if, like, let's say your brother had melanoma, yeah, how does that affect you? Yeah, so uh, for familial genes, um, if you have a direct sibling who's had a melanoma, it increases your risk by about 30% or so um, of potentially developing as well. So you definitely want to get at least your yearly skin cancer screenings. 30%, mm -hmm. okay. Is that different if it was mom or dad? Um, no, I mean, in general, within the family. Okay. So any direct family members, blood relatives, direct. Yeah. So in the skin check, you're looking for atypical moles, possible, which could maybe be melanoma. Yeah. Let's see, let's say you find a mole that's sort of atypical. What what do you do? What's the first step? Yeah, so um, if we're walking through a skin exam, for instance, if it, if it was your first time. So we'd get you into a gown like this, mm -hmm. um, have you lay down on the table, and we really check you from head to toe. So we'll start at the hairline and the scalp. So it's a good idea to wear your hair loose so we can check that. Um, and ideally not wear makeup, but I understand that a lot of times people jump into appointments and go somewhere else or go to work. Um, so we can look through that, but essentially we'll go head to toe and um, look for some suspicious lesions and we'll flip over and check the backside too. Um, so in terms of what we would do, you might see different tools that we use during the skin exam. So while we're looking at the skin, actually brought this home from work. Yeah. Um, so this is called a dermatoscope. So mm -hmm. um, your provider might have some version of this. And it looks at lesions uh, almost microscopically. So it really blows up the lesion, but it has different lighting capabilities too that highlight different, um, different top topography of the skin lesion. So that can help lead us to if it's something that's more or less of a concern and then if we need to treat it. Um, so you might see us using this during your exam. Um, should we find a spot? So there are certain spots that we might treat proactively with something like liquid nitrogen. So we also have liquid nitrogen at home. I had to keep make sure we kept this away from the kiddos so that it wouldn't burn anything or raise anything because it kind of looks like a blowtorch. Sounds kind of loud and intense, and it's just really, really cold. But it basically locally will destroy um, some abnormal tissues. So we'll use it for things like uh, precancerous lesions, which I'll get into too. Um, so you might see them break this out and say, hey, we need to freeze a spot or two. And then if something is really suspicious for a skin cancer, or we need to get some more information, they might, your uh, dermatologist might recommend a biopsy. And so what that looks like is we'll find an area, um, document it, and we'll numb it so you don't really feel anything. But this is my dog, Harper. She's very, very sweet, but she loves extra attention. <laughs> so she's making her cameo. Um, but we numb the area so you're comfortable and you don't feel any of the biopsy. But we'll take a portion or sometimes the whole lesion, just depending on size, location, that kind of thing. Um, and we'll send it off to a laboratory for testing. And so pathologists will then 
take a look at that tissue and decide if it's something that we need to further treat. Like if it's a skin cancer, that may direct what your treatment is from there um, and how we want to go about it. But that can also be basically the style of skin cancer that it is or type of skin cancer as well as where it's located. That right. can play a role in what your treatment recommendation would then be also. Mm -hmm. And speaking as somebody who's had, you know, a couple of skin cancers, um, I would say uh, if you have some sort of red raised spot or I, I've had a few that are like almost like pimples that just don't go away, um, you guys, you want to get those checked out. You want to come in. And even if you say, like Krista was just saying, I, if you don't have a history, you come in every year. But guess what? If one of those spots pops up and you have it, and it's just like not going away, or you pick it, and then it goes away, and then it comes back, guess what? You got to come in and get that checked out. That's always a, a good sign to, like a rule of thumb, if it's not going away. So. Yeah, absolutely. So um, if it's eight months, but you've got something new and you're not sure about it, absolutely go into the office. Do not wait for your year time slot. Um, come in if you ever have a lesion in between. So absolutely come in, ask questions about it, just get it looked at and make sure that we don't have to worry about it or we do or we have to do something. But yeah, yeah so that's just a general guideline for your whole body screening. But you're always, always welcome to come in sooner and get little spot checks and things like that. We do that all the time. Right, and then, so I'm used to more of like those basal cells, the squamous cells, um, but the atypical mole thing, that's like, that's not my jam. Like I, I, I don't know too much about the atypical moles. Now I know a lot of people might have one or two moles, and then there's some people that have lots. Yeah. 50. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so what, what is it that you're looking for, you know, in a, in a mole that's concerning? Yeah, yeah. So, I, yeah, I definitely get asked that all the time, patients who are like, what did you actually see on me? Or what's the difference between that versus this one? Or, um, you know, just things that they can check at, at home. So at, at home, you kind of want to do a little skin check and be aware of um, what you have on the body, too. Um, so we're going to put on um, a couple pictures in a second. Um, we'll have... Uh, Kate my my camera in. crew kind of yeah. took, took an exit. We <laughs> might be having some. Yep. Yep. No problem. We got we got some pictures. We got woohoo. Um, so we'll show you a couple pictures. So the first one we'll throw up um, has basal cells and squamous cell and actinic keratosis, and I'll go through those uh, as soon as they're up. But kind of okay, cool. Um, so we've got some pictures up there. So um, first is basal cell carcinoma. So those are probably the most common skin cancer. About 90% of basal cell uh, carcinomas, squamous cell carcinomas, and actinic keratoses are derived from sun, sun exposure. Um, but so most of the time you're going to find these skin cancers in sun exposed areas. So you think face, ears, neck, back of the neck, um, backs, as well as chest, um, and arms and hands too, because those are commonly exposed more than other body parts. Um, so again, most of these are from sun damage and direct UV um, exposure, but basal cells are the most common. Those will typically present as like fleshy colored round growths um, or pearly bumps or sometimes pink patches. Um, and so that's, if your provider sees something like that, they might recommend, a, well, they probably recommend a biopsy. Um, second would be the squamous cell carcinomas, and those are the second most common um, type of skin cancer. And those are definitely going to be like what you were talking about, where you get these non-healing lesions. So something that's kind of crusting, flaking, scabbing, and it just keeps going through the cycle of doing that, and it's not getting better. It's definitely something that you want to bring to attention of your dermatologist. And then um, lastly on that slide, or that picture, you'll see actinic keratosis. And actinic keratosis are not skin cancers, but they're precancerous growths. And they can, um, so they can develop into squamous cell carcinoma. So skin cancer can come up from those. So they're like an early sign of damage. Mm -hmm. So when we see those, that's why we, we pull out this trusty little guy, um, because we can treat them early on and hopefully prevent biopsies, cutting, and more, um, Know, skin tissue removal if we can get them really early. And we have lots of other treatments that are available in the office for more extensive actinic keratosis. There are prescriptions and uh, photodynamic therapy treatments and all kinds of things that we can 
you know, go there if that's like the path that we recommend, yeah. depending on the um, extent of everything. And if you really enjoy watching me on these, these things, <laughs> you can watch my YouTube video on blue light treatment. Yeah. And I, what else have I done? I don't, they've done it all. I've yes. done all that fun stuff. Carrie is a great person to reference and ask questions about any of these treatments. Before. Oh, and I'm very <laughs> lucky to work at a dermatology practice. So that's yeah. quite handy. Perfect. So um, on the next picture, we have your pigmented or colored moles. So you're asking about more atypical moles. So this is where you kind of get in the pigmented or colored mole category and where we worry about things like melanoma. So melanomas come from uh, the color-based cells in your skin, so melanocytes. Um, and they, they are dangerous because they can grow deep and they can spread throughout the body and cause systemic disease. Um, so the general rule of thumb with a brown or dark lesion um, are the A, B, C, D, E's that you'll see on the picture there. So A is asymmetry. So if you have a mole where one side is a little larger than the other side, if you were to fold it in half and it's asymmetrical, you might want to get that checked. Um, B is border, so a jagged or really irregular appearing border or something that kind of fades um, oddly. Um, or again, kind of asymmetrical border, and pulling back to that. Um, C is color. Mm -hmm. So if you have a mole where one side's kind of dark and the other side's a little pink or um, you know, the pigment looks really patchy. Um, D is diameter, so uh, anything that's larger than a pencil eraser. Now, some people will have larger moles, but it's still, you know, that's a good rule of thumb to get that mole checked. Um, and then E is evolution. So how, if you have something that's growing, so a lot of times we go, oh, you know, I didn't have that mole before, but then a month later you're looking at it, you're like, I swear it's a little bigger. And a month later you're like, okay, it definitely seems bigger. You want to get those things checked out. Yeah. So really, you know, things that are changing or evolving, just come in and ask the question, get the screening, let's double check it. But really with colored moles, that's a really good guideline um, just to, you know, make sure that everything is within normal limits and et cetera, and have your provider check it out. And I know like this is a tool that you use. Mm -hmm. um, are there other tools that we have in the office at our disposal? Yeah, so um, there are definitely people who are higher risk. Uh, so people who are really fair skinned, people who have a lot of moles, like you talked about, who have like over 50 moles, um, strong family history of um, skin cancers, um, or if they've had personal skin cancers, we actually have a really excellent tracking um, option that's available that's called PhotoFinder. So PhotoFinder is a mole mapping system. So it's a computerized system with a high resolution camera that basically takes excellent pictures in, uh, that are accurate of all of your moles. So I'll show you guys a video in a second, but um, we'll have you take a bunch of pictures in different directions and it creates a catalog of all of your moles over time. So what's really great is if you do a yearly skin exam, then we have your pictures then, we have your pictures in a year, and a year after that, and we can overlay that, and the computer actually pulls out things that look different or that look new. And then we can literally look back at your pictures and more specifically and find out, is that new? Or if we have any questionable lesion, we can look back and see, did that exist a year ago at your last exam? Um, it's super helpful and PhotoFinder also has the ability to zoom in so it has a camera that basically has this kind of capability mm -hmm. so if you had a specific spot we can take a really really excellent picture of that now and take another picture in three six twelve months or so and see if it's actually changing or if it's something we need to then biopsy um, and so all of those things the real beauty and Photo Finder is again the compilation of your images over time and being able to watch and track and catch things really early. Because if you think about the statistics and the success rate, if you catch things really early, it's you know it's something that is very very treatable. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, yeah, we'll show you what the Photo Finder looks like. So I've got a little video. So we're going to turn you around here. Check it out. So, and I just wanted to say, I kind of knew she was going to talk about the photo finder, <laughs> but um, so one of the unfortunate things is that photo finder is not yet covered by insurance. I don't really understand why that's the case because it can reduce the cost of care um, if you were to catch, you know, um, and treat a melanoma early or an atypical mole early. Um, so that's unfortunate. In our office, uh, we charge $225 
for your photo finder uh, visit. Um, and I will say that, do I taste good? <laughs> um, I, will, I will say that um, we are so fortunate at Newport Beach Dermatology and Plastic Surgery to have photo finder um, in Newport Beach. It's just our practice and home cancer center that has a photo finder. So um, we're, we're special. And um, I talked to the people over at Photo Finder today, and they said that there was only two other in Orange County and not very close to us. So um, I, I feel very fortunate that we're able to offer this service to our patients. Yeah. So let's check out what it, what yeah. it looks like. So this is from Photo Finder just to help educate patients on what it looks like. So this is basically a patient getting their imaging. That's that close-up dermoscopy that we talked about, so we can track particular lesions over time and then be able to compare those to see if something warrants a biopsy or not. All right, awesome. You can see my blippy and cocoa melon on the bottom. I have some blippy and cocoa melon. <laughs> my kids. Yeah, those are the most YouTube things here. Um, so yeah, so Photo Finder is not a replacement for a skin exam. So uh, you still should do your skin exams, but it's a really good adjunct. So we can use them as a you know, really good tool to making sure that we're on top of everything. And ultimately it can cut down on unnecessary biopsies or even pull things up sooner and, and have us biopsy something if we see something new and it's really small, something that, that we might want look a little bit more normal right off the bat but we can see that it's something new. So it can be positive both ways. Yeah, I think you sort of brushed over that really quickly, but um, what she said, it can help reduce unnecessary biopsies. Like that is so cool because I don't know how many things you've had cut, but it's not fun. Like when you have to get stuff like shaved off and that healing process. So if you can, you know, eliminate that or, or reduce that and not have to do it as often, that's a huge, huge, you know, thing. Yeah, definitely. So people that I would normally recommend getting photo finder in addition would be, again, people who have lots of moles. So over 50 is kind of a good rule of thumb. Uh, people with a strong family history, very fair skinned individuals, people have a history of lots of um, sunburns in the past, um, or a personal history of skin cancer. It's a good idea. So those are, um, you know, all good reasons to consider doing photo finder in addition. Yeah. Okay. So Kristen, you've been at this for, I think five years or so um, in our office. Of mm -hmm. course, you were doing other sorts of medicine before that. Um, what do you think has been kind of the, the most fun thing about like the work that you do or the most exciting thing or the mo mo most difficult thing? Any of those choices. I'm gonna make it <laughs> easy on you so, so you can pick one. Um, I think what's so fun about dermatology is I feel like so many of the conditions that we come across are totally relatable. Like everybody at some point, I mean, I'm not going to speak in generalizations too much, but most people have had a rash. Most people have had a pimple. Most people have had a spot of concern um, on their body or, um, or even on the cosmetic side had anti-aging concerns or um, hyperpigmentation concerns or something. So it's such a relatable field where we can all like understand what it felt like to be in that position where you had something that was bothering you um, or, you know, a friend or family member who was in that position um, or, you know, and again, skin cancer, for instance, is so common that we, most people know somebody who's had a skin cancer, if not in their own direct families. And, um, and then, you know, at our office, we do a lot of medical dermatology as well as cosmetic dermatology. So it's always a fun mix up of things. Um, and we really see, you know, big amounts of both. Mm -hmm. So I, I like dermatology because it always, it's always, you know, a new challenge, a new problem. It's ever, got, you know, changing and mixing it up. It's not really just like one thing we're doing all the time. I really enjoy that. And have you, it's been so long since any of us have been to a party, but we're social distanced and we've both been vaccinated. But Yay. have you, Yay. 
Have you ever been to a party or been in a social gathering with, let's say, more than 15 people where no one has asked you to look at something? <laughs> uh, no, I mean, I definitely, yeah, I definitely have friends and family um, who have all, yeah, been involved in some way yeah. in our practice. So, so yeah, especially they're like, can you just look at something? Or, what would thing. you use? And then, you know, that type of thing. So yeah, you know, it's, it's fun because people are really interested in what you're doing. And like I said, it's super relatable. And um, yeah, and I think our office atmosphere has just been really, really fantastic. Shout out to Dr. McNeil, who has just made it so um, safe for us. Uh, we did get COVID tested at work. Um, we have all the precautions, um, purifiers, at all of our you know PPE equipment that we could possibly need. And it's a very comfortable place. And I think, uh, you know, we feel very comfortable there as employees, and I hope that the patients feel very comfortable. I think that they do. So it's just, yeah. uh, and we have an excellent staff and team. Everybody's so welcoming. Mm -hmm. It's just a really great environment. I love going to work. Yeah, <laughs> we really do have uh, amazing staff, but also amazing patients. And I'm yes. so grateful for all of you who have continued to support us over the years and continue to come see us and even watch like, you know, kicking it with Carrie, like that's supporting it in and of itself. I do want to hear from you guys. I want to know what you'd like us to talk about. Um, this is sort of a launch for this kicking it with Carrie. That's going to be on uh, TikTok. If you know, I, I'm hopeful that I could figure it out because bear with me. I just turned 50. So, um, you know, I'm trying to figure out the TikTok, but we're going to also have like a little highlight reel of, um, uh, kicking it with Carrie stuff and I want to know I need material like what do you guys want to know what do you want to see what do you want to learn about what um, what interests you about dermatology so I want to bring all that to you so um, you're seeing it first here because soon she's going to be on TV uh, with Oprah and Kelly Clarkson yes, talk I mean, show Senna can't hold me back celebrity clients it's, it's happening <laughs> so um, I think you know unless there's any like comments that our camera crew wants to tell me about? <laughs> um, you know, everything's been really positive. Just like, this is such a great way to learn for people who don't know about this. Uh, TikTok is going to be such a great platform for this. There's not really any um, questions, but if you guys want to ask questions, we're here to answer them right now. But so far, it's been just really positive um, comments. Well, that's that's perfect. That's uh, now it might be time for me to eat my my cheese and and, and nuts, but <laughs> and thank you, Kate. Uh, she is making our first little at home session, you know, function and work. So yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. Got a one man camera crew <laughs> killing it. Yeah, thank you for joining us, everybody. Thank you so much, you guys. Please um, join us the rest of the week at seven o'clock. Like I said at the top of the. I don't know. That's seven o'clock. I told you <laughs> we're going to be talking to Jennifer Muller tomorrow about pigment and um, different tricks and things we can do to help, you know, bat that down. And then uh, Wednesday we'll be with Dr. Lamer talking about her diet and how that can affect your skin. And then on Thursday we'll be with Dr. Elstrom talking about all the different trends in plastic surgery over the years. Um, and then Dr. McNeil wrapping us up on Friday with uh, you know, the latest and greatest stuff in dermatology and what's coming down, what's new, what's happening, what she likes, what she doesn't like. <laughs> and so we hope to see you the rest of the week. Thanks for joining us tonight. Good night. Good night.